$26 billion. That is the historic settlement from several states with drug maker Johnson & Johnson and three other drug companies that distributed opioid painkillers. It's a monumental milestone, one that could clear the way for states to use the money for things like treatment programs, education on how to dispose of pills and needles, and also funding for first responders. Some much needed news for families who have lost a loved one to the opioid epidemic. Gary Mendel's son, Brian, battled addiction for years, cycling through treatment programs and struggling with the shame and isolation that comes with addiction. In 2011, Brian, took his own life. And Gary joins us now live tonight to talk about the stigma of addiction and also this major settlement. Uh, Mr. Mendel, we appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'd like to start with the settlement, what this means for families like yours who have lost someone that you love to addiction. Well, it's, it's what's so important about it is we just want people, if you've lost someone, like I have, you just want to sp other families to be spared of that tragedy. And $26 billion, it was roughly $500 million per state, depending on the size of the state, higher or lower. And, and if it's used well, it's just going to help so many people, which makes people like myself feel good. And what's really relevant about this is in the tobacco settlement 30 years ago, most of the money, not all of it, but most was used for purposes unrelated to those having, who had issues related to tobacco. It was used just for state budgets, for general purposes. But most of this money is legislated, 90% of, not legislated, in the agreement, excuse me, 90% is to be used to abate the opioid crisis, which is really, you know, such a groundbreaking you know, part of the deal. And, and as we see it spir spiraling out of control, certainly with the most recent numbers of an uptick of 37% in 2020. Uh, Mr. Mendel, I was struck by your son Brian's story and you spoke of the compassion that your son had. And right now when we're facing this epidemic, compassion is something that we seem to be lacking. Tell us about Brian as a person and his battle with addiction and how far we still have to go to address this with compassion. Sure. I mean, Brian was every father's dream as far as just empathetic, warm, your best friend. Um, just a wonderful child growing up. I mean, I remember him at Yankee Stadium crawling under a, a fence when he was 10 years old to give a homeless person a quarter. Um, a story after story. Just a wonderful human being. But the cause of Brian's death, yes, it was part addiction, but it was also shame and stigma. I mean, he, the thing about stigma is that those who are addicted know that if anybody else finds out, they're going to be shunned. And because of that, many who are addicted don't seek treatment. Because of that, many of addicted just don't tell anybody. And they're isolated. And what's even worse is most of them then internalize that stigma. And it becomes self-stigma. And when they internalize it that way, they begin to believe it. And they start to believe, like my son did, that I'm not worth it, that I'm not worthy of being someone's friend. I'm not worthy of having a good job. And you lose hope and a sense of worth. And that is just, A, it, it's horrific, and B, it can be changed. We can definitely change it. Change it. We've done this with other diseases, and it can be done. And I know that you're doing that uh, after Brian died. You found it shatterproof to spare other families like yours from the loss and the devastation and the pain that you experienced uh, at the hands of addiction. So, so you're making a difference. And we appreciate you coming on tonight to, to share Brian's story and for the work that you continue to do, uh, not just to impact lives, but to promote change in terms of policy and laws. Uh, Gary Mendel, thank you again. Thank you for having me. Such an important issue that we continue to, to shed light on.